Welcome in former NFL quarterback Danny Cannell, who joins us from California. Matthew Stafford, Danny, is one of six quarterbacks in NFL history with multiple seasons of 4,000 passing yards and 40 touchdown passes. The other five are either already in the Hall of Fame or will be when they become eligible. Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Drew Brees, Peyton Manning, and Dan Marino. Does Matthew Stafford have to lead the Rams to a Super Bowl title to go into the Hall of Fame? It's great. We've asked that. We talked a lot about this question a lot this week. And Hakeem, earlier flippantly, I was like, yeah, he's in. But at some point, I think voters are going to start looking at how obnoxious statistics are now because the rules have changed dramatically. Now you're getting an extra game. You go to 17 games because Matthew Stafford is going to end his career at top 10 in almost every passing category. So if they start Diving in a little bit deeper, I think it will come down to the Super Bowl. He's 34 years old. Sneakily, he's getting up there a little bit in age. We've seen how hard it is to get to this game. Other quarterbacks younger have gone and never gotten back. So, Hakeem, i am come around to a place where I'm like, if he wants to be a Hall of Famer, it has to come with a victory on Sunday. Now, it doesn't mean it's over. This team isn't going anywhere. But it's hard to get back to this point, and it's hard to capture this magic. It's hard to get a home game in your own stadium at SoFi Stadium. So, Hakeem, I do think a lot is riding on this one for Matthew Stafford's you know, gold jacket status if he gets it. Yeah, there'll be a ton of debate, but if he gets this victory, I don't think there's much debate. I think he's a slam dunk. Yeah, right now he's 12th in NFL history in both passing yards and passing touchdowns. Uh, in the regular season as uh, he plays in his first Super Bowl. Stafford, he's young. You mentioned he's only two years younger than his head coach, Sean McVay, at 36 years old, looking to become the youngest head coach to win a Super Bowl. McVay facing former assistant Zach Taylor. They got to the big game together in 2018, lost the Patriots in Super Bowl 53. What does Super Bowl 56 mean to Sean McVay's legacy? I think it proves that it wasn't a fluke. Uh, I think there were some people, you know, some maybe critics and, you know, people were making fun of all the hires just because you knew Sean McVay and Zach Taylor was one of them. Cliff Kingsbury, the coaching tree goes on and on and on. And then, you know, they started looking at this and where, where, why aren't they back? Where's Jared Goff? And they make this move for Matthew Stafford and look where they are right back at the top. So I think this firmly cements a victory would firmly cement Sean McVay as one of the top five current coaches in the NFL and you might make an argu argument that he already is but without a Super Bowl victory which other coaches do have that's the only thing he's lacking I mean he's this young offensive uh, innovative mind that has taken the realm of this franchise at an extremely young age I mean I remember looking at him and being like are players going to respond to somebody who's as close in age and clearly they have but a Super Bowl victory would cement him as a top five coach in the NFL and I don't think he would get much pushback on that at all. McVay and the Rams have leaned on Cooper Cup this season who led the NFL in receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. Remember, they lost Robert Woods to a torn ACL in November but added Odell Beckham Jr., who has filled in quite nicely. Danny, how do you see Rams OC and soon-to-be Vikings head coach Kevin O'Connell using Cup and OBJ against Cincy? The same way they have all year. I mean, uh, uh, you're going to see uh, Cooper Cup as the favorite. He's going to get the most targets. He's really the catalyst to the system. And if you look at the way that Kevin O'Connell utilizes him formationally, because you'll see him all over the field. You'll see him outside as your prototypical wide receiver. You'll see him in the slot, which is where he does most of his damage. You've even seen him a few times in the backfield taking some of those speed sweeps or getting the ball in his hand that way. So he's the player they move around the most. He's the feature player, and he's the player that gets a lot of choice routes with Matthew Stafford where it takes an incredible amount of trust and precision between quarterback and wide receiver that everybody's on the same page. Now, Odell Beckham, who gets there midseason, you don't have tr quite the trust in him, so he'll be a little bit more stationary and you'll call a little bit more shot plays with him. And he'll be a second option, which is really where he's flourished. And he's found his time because he gets the best matchups of the opponent's defense because they're going to focus on Cooper Cup. And then it opens up the door for OBJ to make so many big plays. So it really is a nice compliment. And for as much criticism as Odell Beckham has taken throughout his career for being a diva, he's really fit in nicely with the system. And it's paid dividends with not only for his brand, but also getting the ball, getting the touches, including the first three games where he had touchdowns in all three of them. And I would expect him to have yet another big day in the Super Bowl, too. As you know, winning cures everything. So 
even when you think you're in a good situation and winning cures everything. I'm oh, sorry. You're the, I know it hurts, a <laughs> Cleveland guy. I know no, it you know hurts, what it doesn't. It, no, uh, it's, you I'm okay. Just enjoy it. It's okay. I'm okay with it, right, Danny? Because look, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm rooting for the yep. Bengals in the Super Bowl. I got the futures ticket on Cincinnati, so I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay with uh, with OBJ go. going to the Rams. Fine, go ahead. Uh, we continue to talk about <laughs> the storylines. Uh, storylines following the Rams here is Super Bowl 56 defensively. The Rams have an edge with Aaron Donald, Von Miller, and Jalen Rams. I know you wouldn't want to face them. Uh, Ramsey says he wants to face and cover Bengals rookie receiver Jamar Chase. Rams were third in sacks in the NFL. Joe Burrow, as you know, was the most sacked quarterback in the NFL this season. Danny, we saw Burrow get sacked nine times against the Titans. Bengals still won, but the Titans don't have Matthew Stafford. It's nothing against Ryan Tannehill, but they don't have Matthew Stafford. What happens if this Rams defense does the same to Burrow in the Super Bowl? It's a it's a, it's a route, and I, I am a little bit worried about that. To be honest with you, Akeem, we haven't given our official game picks, but I am leaning towards the Rams because of this defense. And it's almost like the Cincinnati Bengals have been playing with house money and in this great underdog story. But I think you're gonna see a lot of what you saw in the Tennessee game, and you made a great point because that Tennessee offense wasn't anywhere even remotely as close to as explosive as what the Rams have on their side, and I. You know, and the, the Cincinnati Bengals defense did a great job against Kansas City, but can they do that again for a full game? I just don't know. And I think it's going to be an absolute field day for the guys that we just featured there for Aaron Donald, for Von Miller, for uh, Leonard Floyd. And Jalen Ramsey is a tough matchup for Jamar Chase. He's big, he's physical, he's not, getting, uh, uh, not afraid of the challenge. He's calling it out, saying he wants a piece of him. And he is one of the best defensive corners uh, in the NFL. And he's, he's even called himself that. And I think he's going to have a, a lot of success against Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase is still going to get his touches. He'll get a few yards after the catch. But Jalen Ramsey is going to keep him in check for most of the game. And if you throw off the rhythm and timing at the line of scrimmage, that means that Joe Burrow is going to be holding that ball in his hands, and he does not want to do that because you do not have that much time against this Rams pass rush. So I'm a little bit worried that you could see the route that I talked about, and Joe Burrow could be another for a, another long day. He's mobile. He can extend plays. But remember last year's Super Bowl, and Patrick Mahomes was running for his life. He was trying to do everything he could to keep that uh, the Chiefs in the game versus Tampa. I think you might see a similar storyline unfold in this game with Burrow trying to do everything he can to minimize a really bad offensive line, but it's just not going to be enough. He can't do it all by himself. Excellent point out of you bringing up last year's Super Bowl. I mean, there was memes and all kind of videos that happened with, with, with Patrick Holmes trying to throw the football, and he was just getting absolutely harassed uh, uh, by the Buccaneers defense. Uh, Aaron Donald, Von Miller each have 16 pressures this postseason, but consider this. Joe Burrow had the best completion percentage in the NFL when pressured this season. No bigger pressure than the Super Bowl. Danny Cannell joining us outside of SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles. Danny, thanks. Now, the Rams built their Super Bowl roster thanks to trading draft picks for established stars. L.A. has not made a first-round pick since Jared Goff in 2016, and they ended up dealing it. Last year, GM Les Snead traded Goff, two first-round picks, and a third-round pick to Detroit in exchange for Matthew Stafford. The Rams are on pace to go seven straight drafts without a first-round pick, but it will all be worth it if they win on Sunday. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game, the highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics? Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.